Now, why this initiative? We all know the statistics about small businesses. They are a critical part of every economy. But COVID-19 has been especially hard for small businesses. And so it's important for us to recognize their strength and resilience as we begin to emerge from the pandemic. Now, since the pandemic started, the digital economy has never been more important. And businesses had to reimagine themselves and pivot online. But this hasn't been an easy task, especially for small businesses without skills and resources. So with this in mind, the WTO Informal Working Group on Micro, Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises, in partnership with the International Chamber of Commerce and the International Trade Center, is launching the Digital Champions for Small Business Initiative, a competition with private sector sponsors to support MISMIS participation in international trade by helping them to go digital. And so Ambassador Cancela, who is the coordinator of the WTO MISMIS Group, will tell us more in a moment about this initiative and how to apply. But to launch this initiative and in celebration of Miss Me Day 2021, we have with us a panel of distinguished small business supporters from the ICC, the ITC and the WTO. So joining us today are Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iweala, who is uh, our Director General at the WTO, John Denton, Secretary General of the International Chamber of Commerce, Pamela Cook Hamilton, who is Executive Director at the International Trade Center, and Ambassador Jose Luis Cancela from Uruguay, who is coordinator of the WTO MISME Group. We also have the pleasure to have with us today representatives of the two private sector sponsors of this initiative, Ms. Eunice Huang, who is head of Asia Pacific Trade Policy at Google, and Josh Kalmer, who is head of global public policy and government relations at Zoom. So a big thank you to Google and Zoom for having accepted to sponsor the initiative. Now, after our speaker's intervention, we'll have a few minutes for questions uh, from participants on the initiative for Ambassador Cancela to answer. So Ambassador Cancela, you'll be in the hot seats. Uh, so you can pose your questions through the Q&A function. Uh, the chat has been disabled for participants. We will use it to post important information about the initiative. And please uh, finally note that interpretation is available in English, French, and Spanish and you can select the language of your choice by clicking on the small globe icon at the bottom of your screen. Now, without further ado, let me turn to our first speaker, Dr. Ngozi, and thank you very much, Dr. Ngozi, for having taken the time to be with us today. I know you have an extremely busy schedule today with an important uh, meeting at the WTO, so thank you for joining us to, to celebrate uh, Miss Me Day. Now, Dr. Ngozi, small businesses form the backbone of the global economy, we know that, but they struggle to trade internationally. So how big an impact has the current crisis had on small businesses and how can we help them build resilience? The floor is yours, Dr. Ngozi. Well, thank you so much, Emmanuel. Uh, thank you and, and the team for organizing this. And I, I must extend my thanks to John, uh, to Pamela, to Ambassador Cancela, Josh and Eunice for being with us here today. It's wonderful to see the, our two sponsors and to have the partnership with ICC, and of course with uh, Pamela at uh, ITC. Uh, it's wonderful that Ambassador Kansela could uh, join us. Uh, he's leading the charge here on MISME, so it's quite right that he should be on the hot seat. <laughs> so let me make uh, three points. Uh, the first point is that uh, MISMEs are key economic players, but they have fewer resources than large companies to weather a crisis. And we all know the figures. MISMIS represent 95% of all companies worldwide, and they account for 60% of employment. The, the MISMIS are also important employers of women and young people, and women-owned businesses are more than likely to be MISMIS. In my own country, we have about 38 million MISMIS, according to the last survey, and about 50% of them are owned by women. In another regional survey of East Africa, Latin America, and South Asia, nearly half, 46% of women-owned businesses had 10 employees or less. Yet despite their economic importance, MISMIS often have smaller safety nets to fall on due to their size and difficulty accessing finance, making it harder for them to pivot during economic transitions. My second point is that MISMIS have felt the brunt of the pandemic's economic fallout. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected MISMIS especially hard. They are unfortunately prevalent in sectors most affected by the pandemic, 
sectors that sometimes need a lot of physical contact, like tourism, food services, culture, retail. And the sectors that um, are hardest to social distance, and um, when you think about uh, some of our countries also, uh, the informal sector is so prevalent. And the informal sector is of course full of business where people earn their living almost on a daily basis. So when you talk about social distances, this becomes even more difficult. And uh, nearly two thirds of micro and small businesses reported being strongly affected by the pandemic relative to only 43% of the large firms. And this is from work done by Pamela and her wonderful team at the ITC. <clears throat> Businesses in these sectors are also more likely women-led and 64% of women-led businesses reported being strongly affected by the crisis compared to 52% of men-led led firms. More than half of MISMIS reported difficulty accessing inputs due to production and trade disruptions, including mandated business closures, reduced demand, lower income and cash flow shortages. Access to trade finance is a key hurdle for MISMIS and is becoming even more challenging. The rejection rate for letters of credit, which stood at 45% internationally in 2019, is on the rise in some regions like Africa, where according to an African Development Bank, Afrexim survey, it's 30% uh, up. And that's why I'm also particularly glad that we've launched a dialogue here on MISMIS and trade finance, access to trade finance in general, uh, uh, but affecting MISMIS as well here at the WTO. Now, how can we help MISMIS build resilience? This is my third point, because this is why we have this uh, uh, digital uh, champions for small business initiative. That's why we're here because we are seeking ways and means to help these small companies uh, build resilience. And um, it's true that MISMIS around the world look to digitalization to keep their businesses afloat. And the pandemic has shown that digitalization is a must. Businesses that managed the best were those that were digitally prepared and had e-commerce strategies in place, according to a study by UNCTAD. By helping small businesses go digital, we can help them build resilience and hence this initiative, like I said at the beginning. I want to congratulate my team here at the WTO and all the sponsors, all who have helped to put this together because I think it's a fabulous initiative. I hope that we'll have active participation by all those listening. It's going to be a big part of what we do at our MC12. And I just want to end by saying a big thank you to Google, to Zoom, to ITC, and of course, to my dear friend, John of uh, ICC. I do encourage industry associations, chambers of commerce, and NGOs wherever they are to become small business champions and to submit proposals for innovative approaches to help business digitalize. Helping small businesses go digital is critical to building that resilience that we're talking about. And it will help us all and the MISMIS weather a crisis such as the current one we're in. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Ngozi, for your insights and your encouraging words. And uh, let us now hear the perspective of the uh, ICC, the International Chamber of Commerce. So John, um, as the voice of business representing millions of SMEs around the globe, what needs to be done in your view to help small businesses navigate the new normal? And how important is it for small businesses to go digital? Oh, thanks so much, Ms. Newark. And it's great to be with you. It's great to be with uh, old friends and a couple of new friends. Uh, it's great to see Ngozi again and also uh, Pamela uh, to, to share, the, share this stage today. Look. We think it's incredibly important. At the beginning of uh, the COVID crisis, we saw immediately the impact on the real economy. So we launched a global campaign, Save Our SMEs. We didn't do it just as a rhetorical uh, exercise. We did it because we were serious. We were seeing, as uh, Dr. Ngozi was saying, SMEs collapsing, particularly where their businesses relied upon physical contact. And even where the uh, pandemic had not affected them because of the collapse in supply chains. We were finding in Bangladesh, swathes of workers and SMEs go out of business in the garment uh, value chain. 
uh, even before uh, the COVID-19 hit them. So we saw this early on and the very points that were being made uh, in Dr. Ngozi's uh, intervention, we saw reflected in the reality. For example, this morning I was discussing uh, 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 with businesses in Surabaya in Indonesia, how we're actually able to help them come back faster. A lot of that was we were able to help them and encourage them and show them the way to actually use uh, the use Instagram to convert their businesses to online businesses. But then of course, what we also learned was how we can actually support them with distribution networks, how we can also support them with payment systems as well. So it wasn't just a matter of going digital. There's actually a whole business, uh, I suppose, model that needs to accompany that. But it doesn't have to be as sophisticated as a complex business model. It's really just getting all the pieces in place which is why we then saw the need to create what we call the ICC Centers of Entrepreneurship on a global basis, which as you know, Emmanuel and Dr. Ngozi, we've already launched in, uh, in uh, Turkey and in Lebanon. We're in the process of now launching a whole cluster in Africa and Latin America and Asia. And by the way, we welcome uh, the participation of Zoom uh, and Google uh, in the creation of these, because what we're doing is actually helping SMEs and helping entrepreneurs uh, prosper in the new normal by helping them learn and, be, and give them availability and access to the business tools that are essential to do so. How do you create an effective business model uh, with what you've got? If it's only just a matter of your grandmother who's actually knitting uh, in a refugee camp, how can we use that? Display that on Instagram, give her an opportunity to build a business out of that by then attaching it to how you distribute, how you get paid, et cetera. That's all the stuff we do uh, in these ICC centers of entrepreneurship. It's really important. And by the way, uh, one reason I'm involved is that the ICC competition is a good. So any competition is a good competition from our perspective. Uh, we love competitions. We have competitions at our World Chambers Federation over the most innovative way of helping refugees. We have, we have competitions over the most innovative idea to regenerate chambers, et cetera. And we love the idea of competitions about how we can help, help SMEs move into the digital world. So it's good for us. What we also like doing, though, is actually not just doing announcements. We actually like building facts, building substance. One of the most pleasant things about um, spending a bit of time on this panel today is, again, being with Pamela. Because what we're doing with the ICC and ITC is not just having a good relationship. We're seeking to use our relationship to accelerate the way in which we help SME. So what we're doing at the moment is working out how we can take all these public goods, these amazing tools that ITC is developing to support the development and digitization of SMEs and then flow them through our distribution channels, through our CEO, centers of entrepreneurship globally. That will make a difference. Our aim in the end is to transform the possibilities for SMEs. And as Dr. Ngozi said, the other issue which is running around is how do we improve their access to trade finance? We see that all the time. So again, we have created our own fintech platforms now uh, based on the concept called Trade Now, ICC Trade Now. The whole idea is to distribute the access, make, make greater accessibility available to SMEs at a lower cost and actually take it to them at a local level. And that's what we're doing through ICC Trade Now. So we endorse this. And we'll be bringing our ICC small business champion, Victor Dosseretz from Argentina, into this place as well, Ambassador. So he can be in the hot seat with you eventually. But we look forward to progressing this, this competition. And I love the idea of reading some of the submissions, because no matter what, we'll learn something. So thanks very much for the opportunity to participate. Thank you very much, very much, John. So what we need, poor business model, we need to transform the possibilities. I, I like that. Now, to give us another perspective, uh, let me now turn to, to Pamela. Uh, Pamela, as John said, the ITC is very active on the ground supporting small businesses to grow and tap into new markets. So can you tell us uh, more about how the ITC has responded to try to meet the changing needs of small businesses in a COVID-19 impacted world and how we can better support small businesses in today's increasingly digital world? The floor is yours, Pamela. Thanks so much, Emmanuel. And uh, it's great to be here with Dr. Ngozi and John, and of course, Ambassador Cancela. Um, it's great also to be here with Zoom and uh, Google. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I'm very pleased to be here as part of the commemoration of UN MSME Day. Um, it continues to be heartening to see MSMEs become such a central part of the discussion in the WTO. It confirms how critical addressing their needs are to the recovery, and also that WTO is listening to the smallest and most vulnerable businesses and understanding that trade rules also need to work for them. This is an excellent initiative today, encouraging MSMEs to become digital champions. Thank you as well to the ICC for joining us in supporting it. 
chambers are critical to scaling of digital access, literacy, and opportunities for small firms everywhere. And I'm also pleased that the ITC and the ICC are strengthening its partnership by putting in place a coordinating mechanism, which John has just spoken about. Our research shows, although digital inequities existed before the pandemic, the digital divide grew wider over the past year. Those without access or the skills to use digital platforms have been even more excluded. Access to and the ability to productively use digital communications is becoming akin to a human right. Our work in ITC is about ensuring that small enterprises benefit from trade, connect to markets, and contribute to sustainable development. And to do this, ITC has used digital platforms as part of its approach for the last 20 years. These digital capabilities turned out to be essential in the past year. The switch to remote working tools allowed us to maintain most of our development activities. We had a 50% jump in enrollments on our e-learning portal. We launched new platforms for youth and e-commerce entrepreneurs, and we expanded participation in our She Trades platform, connecting tens of thousands of businesses. And MSMEs reacted very quickly to these offerings. They understand that digital is not the future, it is now. In the course of our work with small tech firms and e-commerce sellers in developing countries, we find entrepreneurial resilience and even optimism. In our survey of small firms in these countries, we found that one in four had started to sell online as an early reaction to the crisis. And the vast majority, nearly 90% of those not selling online, plan to do so imminently. Yet despite the optimism, we know that the opportunities for digital trade are not spread evenly. The story is one of imbalance. Large online marketplaces captured the land share of the boom. As many as half of all small sellers in developing countries saw major declines in their online sales. Those able to profit offered essential goods or were able to position themselves innovatively. Far too many MSMEs, especially in LDCs and rural communities, are disconnected from this digital revolution. So digital access and affordability remain real barriers to sustainable and inclusive trade, and we need to address this. And that's why I'm so excited to see both Google and Zoom online with us today. The pandemic has not hit all businesses in the same way. Women-owned and youth-led firms were hardest hit. Both can benefit from digital access. We know from our surveys that youth are more adept at digital technologies and women-owned businesses are more successful online than offline. We need to ride this wave. Thus, we welcome this initiative and all initiatives that champion creativity, scaling of digital solutions, whether infrastructural, cultural, educational, or linguistic. We know that if we're to emerge from the pandemic in better shape, putting MSMEs at the heart of the recovery is critical, but that recovery also needs to be greener. And digital excellence is part of the equation. If we want to empower a green recovery, we must nurture and empower digital champions. This week, ITC launched its flagship publication, Empowering the Green Recovery. It sets out a roadmap for helping our trading ecosystem better adopt green and sustainability as a must have rather than a nice to have. So I urge all of you to read it, share it and take from it. And I really am excited about this initiative and our partnership. And I look forward to us you know, increasing the access of MSMEs to digital platforms and digital expansion. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pamela, and thank you all for sharing precious insights into the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on, on small businesses and the importance of helping them go digital. So let me now invite Ambassador Cancela, who is the coordinator of the WTO MISME Group, to tell us more about this initiative that we're launching today. And I just would like to remind uh, the participants that they can ask their questions on the initiative in the, in the Q&A, via the Q&A function um, of, uh, of Zoom. Ambassador Cancela, you have the floor. You're muted, Ambassador Kansala. No, it's okay, I guess. Yes, that's <laughs> Thank fine. you. Thank you, Manuel. Well, let me begin by thanking the ICC and the ITC for having joined this initiative. So Pamela, John, thank you very much for having joined this initiative and for being with us today to celebrate this Miss Me Day. Um, Thank you very much also to our Director General, Dr. Ngozi. Uh, thank you very much 
for the institutional commitment of WTO, but also for your personal commitment, commitment with the MISMIS and the MISMICOS. So uh, I would like also to thank our co-sponsors, Zoom, uh, Zoom and Google, for having joined this initiative too. Uh, let me go briefly to the goal of this initiative. Well, first, let me say that the goal of, of this initiative is to support MISMIS participation in, inter in international trade by helping them to go digital. Second, we want to raise awareness among businesses and policymakers of the difficulties MISMIS encounter related to digital trade, um, be it cybersecurity threats or conforming to regulatory requirements. And for place, we would like to highlight the best practices helping small businesses go digital and promoting their participation in international trade. Who can submit proposals under this Digital Champions for Small Business Initiative? Well, industry associations, chambers of commerce, and NGOs with a miss miss and digitalization focus. What kind of proposals are we looking for? Uh, proposals to support small business participation in international trade by helping them to go digital. Proposals can focus on raising awareness campaigns, competitions, capacity building, uh, training, mentoring programs. Proposals should be designed also to be delivered by the entity making the proposal and should not, of course, focus on WTO negotiations or proposed changes to WTO rules. That's not about it. So again, uh, the ICC, the ITC, and the WTO MISMI group will use their networks to support and promote the most successful proposals. Some um, features about the proposals itself, they should contain um, the following elements, detail the concept of the proposal, the aims of the proposal, timelines, and other information as appropriate, uh, and uh, please be no longer than three pages. The proposals um, had to be sent to the following address in Word or PDF format, that is digital champions at WTO.org by the 15th September, 2021. Again, um, they would have uh, be submitted by 15th September, 2021. Um, I think that um, our team uh, will post the email in the chat with the details of, of, of this and, the, and the, um, the email address uh, I have just mentioned. Um, the selection of the proposals will be carried out uh, by members of the WTO MISMI group and representatives of the ICC, ATC, WTO, and sponsors organizations. Uh, winners will be announced at the uh, MC12, the WTO Ministerial Conference, uh, to be held in Geneva from 13 November to 3rd December 2021. Uh, more information can be found in the joint news item to be published on the WTO website. Um, and well, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have on this initiative. Um, so finally, let me say that if you are an international association, a chamber of commerce or an NGO working with Ms. Smith, Please be part of this competition and become a champion. Small businesses need you and need your proposal. So join us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Jose Luis. Uh, so let me now turn to the sponsors, uh, Google and Zoom, for a few remarks before um, we, we take a few questions from the chat. I'm very conscious of time. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll try to, we may go a few minutes over time, uh, but if I could ask uh, Eunice and, and Josh uh, to make the intervention in, in two minutes, that would be great. So Eunice, uh, let me turn to you first and then uh, I will invite Josh. So Eunice of uh, Google, who is head of Asia Pacific Trade Policy. 
Thank you, Emmanuel, and thank you for the opportunity to be here. We're really happy to be working on this initiative with, with the WTO, um, the ITC, and the ICC. Um, I wanted to initially tell you a story about this incredible, um, you know, businessman and uh, entrepreneur in, in Indonesia. But given the, the constraints of time, I think I'll cut that short. But in short, I think what I wanted to say is that um, echoing what John said earlier, you know, it's not just about getting onto online platforms like having a social media account. It's also the plumbing of it, right? The the, the payment systems behind it, the ads, the the online advertising, um, that that all needs to come together for small businesses to be successful um, when they when they go on digital platforms and when they digital digitalize. Um, you know, we have um, you know surveys by McKinsey that say that you know uh, miss me's with high internet. Um, high intensity internet use grow twice as quickly and they export twice as much um, and they create twice as many jobs compared to their non-digital peers. So we really believe that, you know, um, digitization is really important, especially in this climate of, of economic recovery, um, where we really need to fire up all engines for economic recovery and to use digital to bake in more resilience into our economies. Um, so as Google, um, we're really excited for what we believe will be very many uh, creative and meaningful proposals. Um, and we're very excited to play a very helpful partnering role in the process. So thank you again uh, for the opportunity to participate. Well, and thank you to you for having accepted to, to sponsor this initiative. Let me now talk to, to Josh uh, of Zoom. Josh. Well, th thanks, Emmanuel. And again, uh, thank you to the ITC and the WTO and the ICC as well. Uh, it's really a privilege for us to be here. It's also really personally meaningful. I've spent most of my career actually as a, as a trade negotiator and in trade policy. And so just to, to be with Dr. Ngozi and to be a part of this uh, setting and to understand the context just means a lot. Um, you know, this is, this is ultimately, and I think, you know, the fact that we're all here today reflects uh, the reality that this is a team sport in a way. Um, we, we all understand the critical importance that, that Ms. Mies play, not just in creating growth, but in creating economic opportunities around the world, especially in, in less developed areas and, and, and so forth. Um, but it's just critical that we've got every possible player doing its part to, to support that. We need companies like Zoom and Google and, and all of our other colleagues in the technology sector connecting people around the world. We need institutions uh, like the WTO and the ITC and the ICC putting together thoughtful rules and, and frameworks for, for us to enhance trade. And, and of course, we need the MISMEs uh, most of all to, to keep generating opportunities uh, for people. It's, it's just really gratifying to see all these things come together today. We're really excited to be a part of this uh, competition. Um, and, and please just know that, that in Zoom, you have a partner committed to, to small businesses, committed to international trade and to development, and to very much being a part of this conversation into the future. So thanks so much for having us. Thank you very much. And thanks again to uh, our two sponsors, uh, Google and, and Zoom. Um, I see that there are quite a few questions in the chat. Uh, some of them do not relate directly to the initiative. So let me take those that relate to the initiative that we're launching today. Um, one question for you, Ambassador Cancela, how many proposals will be selected for support? And will there be guidelines for this mission? Can I? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, it will depend on the number and the nature of the proposals received. Uh, we anticipate awarding two to five uh, prizes, and uh, we will try also to ensure uh, geographical balance among the different proposals received. Thank you very much. There are a few other questions that um, I think I will answer very quickly in the interest of time. Um, there was one question, associations in Nepal can also apply? Yes, of course. Um, can, uh, is it open to private businesses or only associations? It's open to industry associations, chambers of commerce and NGOs uh, that work with uh, small businesses uh, or on digitalization. And there was one question on whether we can share the details regarding the proposal via email. 
Uh, yes, we can. If you can then put your email um, as a, in the questions, uh, we can send it to you. But everything will be available on the WTO website. Um, there will be news items issued by our respective organizations with the details of, the, um, of this initiative and how you can apply what you should include in your submission. So I invite you to uh, have a look at, the, um, at our respective websites. Um, and I think the link um, to the webpage will actually be posted in the, in the chat uh, very soon. So um, we are over time now. Uh, I just would like to say a big thank you to our speakers, Dr. Ngozi, John, Pamela, and Jose Luis, and to our sponsors, of course, uh, Eunice and, and Josh. Uh, big thank you to our interpreters as well. Thank you all for your attendance and do not hesitate to reach out to us by email should you have any further question on the initiative. Um, the email has been posted on the chat, but I'll mention it quickly again, digitalchampions at wto.org. And as I just said, you can find more inf information about the initiative on the small business page of the WTO website. We just posted the link in the chat and in the news items that will be published uh, today by our respective organizations. So we very much look forward to receiving your proposals. Please join the competition and become a small business champion. And again, happy Miss Me Day to all. Thank you very much. Happy Miss Me Day to all of you. Happy Miss Me Day. Happy Miss Me Day. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.